Hey everyone, happy new year. It is January, 2023, and I have a surprise for you. <laughs> so many of you have heard my story over and over, and I know I just it's just me on most of the videos, but that's why I brought someone <laughs> on for this um, video today to start off the new year with a bang. Let me just tell you, as we share, this is my daughter-in-law, Jalyn. Um, as we share and talk about some things, just remember there are links below about all kinds of resources that you can use to start this path yourself. So just make sure to look in that box and you can also have that same support that we both had, right? Yeah, totally. This is Jalyn Whiteman. She is married to my daughter, Chase, about what, six years? Son, Chase. Did I say daughter? <laughs> They're used to I'm, that. You totally. They're used to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, two cute little girl granddaughters mm -hmm. and uh, one on the way. Can we say yeah. that? Yeah, we can. We told her that already. <laughs> Next grandkid. Um, so Jalyn has quite a story and, and hers is also a faith-based um, path. And I had to share. I had to let her share. So I've invited her to come and, and we're just going to give you, we'll see how long it is. Yeah, we'll we're both talkers, so <laughs> we'll see how long it ends up. But um, she has lost almost 90 pounds. 90 pounds in the last year. But I think you would say, and maybe you'll say this as you share, that hasn't been the most dramatic. I think the oh. most dramatic change has been head, heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to let her start off. We're going to talk a little bit. I want her to share a little bit about her backstory. Um, and then we'll kind of go into what, how you got yeah. to where you are today. Yeah. I would say like losing the weight was just like a nice byproduct of like the, the root of what I needed. I think you always are looking to like lose weight. Cause like, let's be real. I couldn't, I nearly couldn't tie my shoes Yeah. at almost 300 pounds. And I just was like, this life isn't <laughs> worth living no. anymore. Um, especially when I started realizing like cleaning up the kids toys was like too hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, simple tasks. Baseline life was too hard. And I, I just really realized that, um, my background, I want to really say like where I came from is something I will treasure forever. And um, I'm so lucky to have been in such a hard spot because sometimes you don't get to the tipping point unless you've been in such a hard spot and you can learn maybe later, maybe in the beginning, it's something you fight against. But later on, I just learned that like yeah. God gave me that hard backstory so that I could, so that I could transition. And so um, like generational food trauma, um, generational binge eating and things like that. So, I mean, I'm eight years old and I'm already addicted to sugar and oh, flour. Man. Oh man. And but I no clue that that's what that no is. No idea. Yeah. I would hide food. Um, even as a kid, I remember I'd go into our massive storage room. I was a massive pantry and, um, find all the snack food that I wasn't supposed to be eating and then eat in secret. And then I also had a lot of um, that carried into my adult years where I was like, I'll never be someone who goes out to eat because that was something from the generation prior. I'd never wanted to repeat, but then I found myself at Walmart. And I'm like, why am I getting a candy bar at Walmart? As if it was all of a sudden something different. Um, and so I think, um, I, I've really just chosen to, to look at my background as something that's been the, the, it's okay that, that it, it something so hard is what gets us to move yeah. forward. I think it would be best if we just did things preemptively. Just made good choices. We just did it because we should, <laughs> but sometimes God pushes us in these ways and he says, it's not worth living and let me help yeah. you. You reach a level of desperation yeah. that is a gift because yeah. you will start to make choices that you would not have considered because yeah. food is such a Life. dear <laughs> friend and to move and you out of that space, sometimes it takes that desperation. And it's, it's one of those things that you have to juggle with because there are some things, if you choose not to do drugs anymore, you never have to look back. You never have oh, to do yeah. it again. You never have to oh, be yeah. in those those realms again, but I'm sorry, you don't get a getaway from food, especially when no one else tends to see it as even wrong. Even, even just everyone around you thinks, well, what's it's fine. <laughs> even candy bars and that nothing yeah. is ice cream. Nothing is, has, but you know, wrong. yes, you and, know, it's reached that point. Yes. And, so uh, what was the tipping point? So you, you had reached a point where your weight was making life difficult. Yeah. Where just things were hard to be as a mom. And so my, my massive tipping point was when I um, was pregnant with my first child, I had preeclampsia and I had no idea that that meant anything related to my decisions or choices. Um, doctor's offices won't tell you that they do. They, they tend to just treat you. Yeah. They just yeah. treat you. And then. In my next pregnancy, um, I had a um, miscarriage, and um, that was when I realized, like, 
maybe something was up, like maybe my choices were playing a role in it. And um, and then fast forward, I couldn't get pregnant again for a long time. When my first one, I get pregnant in yes. a snip snap. Yeah. And and um, so my that's my second pregnancy. By my third kid, I had gestational diabetes at 12 weeks, which if you're not familiar, you're not supposed to get even tested until 28 weeks. Oh, I forgot that it was that early. Yeah, it was so early. And we, we kind of were wondering that that was probably why I miscarried so early in the mini. And, and while your placenta plays a role in that, mainly I was eating really, really bad. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and, uh, so here you are pregnant yeah, and, and you have to face this. And I, and I, and I mean, you're up against losing your baby if you don't, um, if you don't okay. keep your blood sugar under control. And so, um, I felt forced into that role. I felt like I had to really just follow the rules. So I did. I really followed them just bare minimum. I was just <laughs> scathing by, like, um, just what can I get I, away with? Yes. So yeah, exactly. I would <laughs> even I would even eat the crappy things so that I, you know, what I mean, so I could have it even if it meant foregoing a baked potato because I had so many carbohydrates. You trade the sugar. To, for, yes, just yeah. to get the addiction. So I I then um, was finding such um, I felt so different. I was feeling so much better. And that was a really big cata, um, catalyst. Catalyst. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Into <laughs> into changing, and um, I had had lots of just like little nuggets. It was a lot of just little nuggets of um, thought process and thinking where it was like um, a little bit from her, and <laughs> and I needed that. Um, but it but couldn't you, have. It could you have forged been just, your own way. You yeah. did. You forged your own way. Was, this was mm -hmm. between you and the Lord. It and really you. was. And I and yeah. I had learned enough information from a few different places um, that really helped me to recognize the educational portion of it was not aligning. And I and I knew that I wanted to be um, different. And I went through a whole phase where I decided that I was just going to do it in moderation. Yeah. And. It was impossible. Was it working? <laughs> uh, and that may work for some. That may work. Yeah, and I've is. said that before, but a lot of us that are true addicts, yes, it, it, there is no such thing, especially mm -hmm. in the healing, in the in healing the part. When it's time yeah. to heal, sometimes you need to be pretty dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And Never. it doesn't mean you may have to be forever. I probably I, will. I don't know where yeah, you'll end I up. I don't either. But, huh. but yeah, sometimes that healing process, you really just have to rip the band-aid, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. And, and so you decided? Yeah. Just to just to, say it. You said no white flour and no, no white sugar, yeah, right? Yeah. Wasn't that kind just, of your boundary? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I just, I haven't eaten it in a while. I, I will say, I told her, I was like, I sometimes get a little bit nervous to talk about it only because <laughs> I'm so in the depths of healing right now. I've only been doing this since last February, so... Next month is so a year. about twelve months almost, yeah. Yeah, and that, and and I'm still really, really early on, and I still sometimes get triggered into my old habits just as much as anyone else. But I feel um, that I have the backbone now to be like, I know what I want. I know the desire is so deep inside of me um, to live a different life. Yeah. So, what is the backbone like? What has the process been like for you? What have been your key things to carry you through those eleven months? Such a good question. So, quite a few things. I think just need. I really, really needed to know what the heck was happening in my body. Yeah. Blood like sugar. I, yes, I yeah. Pretty predominantly the blood sugar thing was really eye opening to me when it came to the gestational diabetes. That I recognized. Even people who eat healthy have wacky blood yeah. sugars and that can cause dementia. And yeah. it, like when I started learning all the things, I was like, we don't want this. We don't <laughs> want this. Besides um, the pregnancy issue. And besides the weight. Yeah. Like and even besides if I was, your baby's Yes. Health. And I finally got to the point where I remember, I, I told you this yeah. over the last year. <laughs> I don't care if I'm overweight my whole life. I genuinely don't care. I don't care what I look like anymore as far as weight gain and things like, like that. Like body image is, is just, no. yeah. I, and, and it's you more to, about what? I want to be able to function in my life. Yeah. I want to be able to, um, the raging headaches. Like yeah. I, those, yeah. those. You had them daily. I you? literally didn't know that they were connected because I was like, I just have them. Yeah. I was born with You just thought headaches. it was tension or. Yes. I thought, yes. And, and no. you got a lot of treatment. Yeah. And nothing changed You'd go to the chiropractor, so. you go to massages, nothing would fix it. And then I was like, did this thing. I'm like, wait, my headaches are gone. It took me like four months before I was like, wait, I haven't had a headache in a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's true. So little, little things like that where I was like, I'm just feeling so much better. And then the naps. I was taking two hour naps every single day, every single day for years. 
Yeah. Like and you maybe think that's seven just, years. It's just how I am. No, I totally you thought that was just normal. I'm just. I work really hard. And your energy. Changed. Now I yeah, and now I don't take naps as much. Energy change. So you're right. It's oh, yeah. the weight is on the list, but it's lower on weight, the list totally in terms of. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. things that keep you motivated. Yeah. So there's so many resources and like maybe not even sensible to go through them all right now um, because there's so many. A lot of the a few books that I read were really helpful. A few people I will that I have her give me the list sure. of the books that were most helpful for her and we will post them in the that box works. below. So if yeah. you want to check them out. Sure, books and, and Instagram people. I know. And there's, there's, there's plenty of, of things to learn, but learning was the basic. Once I got some of that education part down the road, down out of the way was the community. I really, really needed a good sense of community. Um, and I made it. I made my own you community it. I, because I couldn't find what I was looking for. I didn't want a bunch of people who who were body shaming over they they accidentally ate garbage food. Guys, that's just part of life. You're I know, gonna accidentally I know. eat garbage food and you're not gonna feel good one day. You wanted someone that was on the same like, yeah. mindset. Yes, and he, in wanting to heal and not wanting to just um um, shame themselves. Why was community yeah. important? Just for the accountability or for the sharing so you could yeah. share that experience? Uh, for me, it was because I lived so much of my life in secret. Yeah. And you yeah. wanted it out there. Totally. And I remember the day I hadn't even made any changes. And I remember being like, I have to tell, for me, it was my little Instagram people. I was like, I'm just going to tell them what I'm going to do and haven't done a single thing to do anything about it. I'm just going to tell them I'm just not going to eat sugar and flour anymore. And then when I did, it was like this weight was lifted off of me because I knew that when I go to a party, people already know my life choices and what I decided. And I, was, I have to, do I have enough integrity to hold yeah. to that? Yeah. And so, so that helped just to put it, it was, out there. It put was. It and then there was the community portion of also like, wow, it feels really lonely. Is there anyone else that doesn't do what I'm doing? Because yeah. like most people don't value it. Mm. Um, okay. And then the main, like the very pinnacle, um, the highest, most biggest piece for me was um, surrendering to the Lord. I really... Um, had to come to know him in a different way. I didn't know what it meant to know him like this. Um, and it's so hard to explain and yeah. so hard to describe because it's so extremely Be personal. Because you had been a believer in Christ your oh, entire life. Entire life. life. Like, entire teeny, life. That's tiny, kind of my story. Kid, yeah. But there's a shift. Yeah. There's a shift. Yeah. And <clears throat> what it was for me was not um, fighting it. Like, like he's he's I'm not mad at him like he's not the one that's being like and you must eat better <laughs> like because for a long time it was that like looming thing that like God must be so disappointed in me yeah. because I'm not taking care of my body and it was so the opposite once I really realized and learned who he was God loves us and he wants he's on our team and he wants us to be um to Heal. use it he wants us to use him and when you when you learn that um he can heal in all aspects so many people are so, so quick to be like, I got to do it myself. Um, what, what, what business does he have on food? Right. Or, or I put things. the plans out there and then he helps me with my plan. Yeah. No. And that was not what, <laughs> no. it was <laughs> surrender. It was him telling you. Exactly. Like, right. Yeah. Yes. And so many, so many things were me getting on my knees, posing a question and, and waiting for a response over long times. Yeah. Just trying to identify that because I had a lot of kickback, a lot of people saying it's it's a little bit black and white what you're doing. Yeah. And I and I said, but God told me to do it like this. Yeah. And that's when I gained so much confidence in knowing that like my process and my path was the way that He wanted for me, mm -hmm. and and he, and He was giving me the strength to do it because guess what? I've never been able to do it a day in my life, and I've been doing it. I did Weight Watchers <laughs> when I was 12 years old. <laughs> you think that like you're I right. could do it by myself yeah. at 30? No. And so I, that that was a huge huge thing for me was was that it, it literally feels like the tight grip you have of like controlling your ideas about it or your belief system about it was just like this you just what surrender. do you want me to do um and 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 you think that's why our stories are all going to look very different is because what he wants you to do and how it yeah. looks like is going to be based on your baggage and based on your your surroundings and how you were raised and all the different things. And what will work best for you? What will heal your body exactly. the best depending on your, your... But the core thing that I preach on this channel again and again and again is the, that it's surrender, like you said. Yeah. I just love that. I love that she... I asked her to come up with what those points herself, but I love that it dovetails so beautifully with what we talk about on this channel because mm -hmm. it's... It's putting him in charge of this yeah. whole mess. Yes. It's it's understanding that he cares, like yeah. you said, and yeah. that he will lead yeah. and he will heal. Anytime you feel that feeling of like tight grip control, I'm the queen of it. <laughs> She's going to love it. 
I love it. You're the epitome of control. <laughs> and, and to just like go and to let God, I guess that's like totally the that's same. That's the message. Like, let go and let him. Yeah, he, he'll guide. He'll guide. Um, but you have to, one, do what he asks. Yeah. And two, you have to ask him. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's too scary to even know what he has to say because it might be too hard. Yeah. But he can empower with the hard too. Not only can he so tell us what to do. The irony is, his, he the, the hardest thing that I thought could ever happen was this. Literally, I was like, the, the, as, I'll do anything as long as it's not given up completely. I'll do it in moderation, I'll whatever. <laughs> I had it in any way, not this. And then turns out, do you know that this is the easiest route for me? Mm-hmm. It really was. Yeah. Like the path of least resistance was to just say goodbye just, and good night. Yeah. Like I just want to be away from it because it wasn't consuming my ever th- ever loving thought and I could just move forward. Yeah. Um, and so that was really beautiful. It's not as say it out loud to others. <laughs> it, it once you make that step, if mm-hmm. that's where the Lord leads you and yeah. says maybe no sugar, no flour for a while. Because flour re- responds in the body like exactly. sugar. White flour does. That's why. But but it's not once you you get there, you start to feel him carrying you and yeah. you're right. It's yeah. not as terrifying. No. It's, it, it, it's it, a, you and then you feel empowered and I yeah. and I feel like even in the times where like maybe I've still struggled um, for a day or two here and a day or two there, I have so much confidence because I've re I I have proven to my own subconscious that I can, yeah. that God will carry me through yeah. because I am willing to do what He asks. Yeah, and um, I and I and the last piece I will say in like how I've come to um, build that relationship with. Um, my heavenly father and is by repenting. I really feel that like the, the like heavenly father, I, I treat it as a sin. Yeah. Like I have distanced myself from you. Yeah. I have put I've something, on that. I've, I've put something in place of you when I should have been turning to you. I turned to food. Yeah. I should have been relying on the Bible and the scriptures. And instead I turned to food yeah. and I, and I used that to cope through my hard things or whatever it looked like. I would get on my knees and I would say, Please forgive me. Help me. I don't want this. This isn't what I was out to do. And when I put him right back in that place, um, I got more power. Literally more power came to me to be able to do it again by just simply saying, I want you as my my foundation, not this food. And that was the... <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted her. I got so moved. Yeah. So A hundred percent. I could not... Oh, I could not have said it any better. Any okay. final thoughts? That was it, girl. Yeah, I that really, was beautiful. I, my final thought is this: <laughs> uh, I'm not cool. I'm not special. You yeah. can, like, yeah. you can literally do it. <laughs> because I used to think these people who would do these little videos were full of bull because <laughs> I thought they were extra special and they had something like going for them and. And you think, but not me. Not me. I'm not like them. Yeah. I've been told that hundreds of times. I bet. Because it feels so real. The difference is you can't let other people get in your way. You can't let anything get in your way between you and God. And it has to be you too. And then you can introduce your community. They can all be together. But but you have to um, believe that you even could be redeemed by him. That he would love you enough to, To to, to help you if you wanted it. Oh, see why I brought her? See why? I, I, I learned from the best. No, she has her own testimony and that, that I just knew she had to share. Mm. So I'm thankful that you were able to enjoy this, this beautiful soul. We'll and do all she has to yeah, I have know. a million things I can say. <laughs> My son married someone a lot like me, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> So here's the thing. I will put her Instagram on the, in down in the description box. Also, if you want to follow her, you can DM her on Instagram. Sure. She has a fun little community going there, but it's not a lot about weight. It's a no. lot about life and motherhood. It's, a, and it's about crazy. just being real, being okay with what you got. You don't need to the show. I love it. We wish you the best. If you have questions, please ask in the comments. We would both love to answer anything, yeah. but mostly we just wanted to share that same testimony that this is possible yes. through Christ. Take care.